Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're taking a look at the newest release of Pure OS, based on Debian in the GNOME desktop environment. But before we get started, please do me a favor, like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we're producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Pure OS. We're going to go over to their website, which is pureos.net. And it's a beautiful website. Up top, you've got Pure OS. You've got downloads, source code, bug tracker, Pure OS wiki, and then, of course, the mirrors. And it just basically states it's a user-friendly, secure, and freedom-respecting OS for your daily usage. And you can download version 10. And some of the things that are new in Pure OS, they now have greater stability through following a stable upstream. They have new security and update software channels. They have new tooling for managing older versions of TPM chips. Changes to make the Librem key work out of the box. And lots of bug fixes and healing some paper cuts. And then if you come down the bottom down here, it shows you some of the modern and full-featured and user-friendly applications that come with it. And then you go even further and they talk about real convergence because Pure OS isn't just an OS for your laptop or your PC. They have Purism, which is a convergence, which puts the OS on a Librem 5 phone and Librem laptops. You actually have the same operating system on a phone that you do on a laptop. That's something we definitely want to support because, of course, Google is trying to accomplish that, having the same system on a phone as they do on laptops or PCs, and Apple's made efforts, but Pure OS is actually doing the work and making it happen. True convergence between mobile and desktop. So we're going to go ahead and close out of this, and if you download Pure OS, throw it on a USB, put it into a virtual machine, and load it up, this is the desktop you're going to be met with. If you right-click on the desktop, you can change your background, adjust your display settings. Let's go ahead and check out the background. And now that the backgrounds have populated, you've got a few to choose from. There are some very beautiful ones. I like the one that comes with it out of the box, but I think I'm going to give this one a try. Let's move that. I think that looks really good. And with GNOME, you get one top panel. If you go over to the panel, you got to arrow down. When you arrow down, it shows your wired connection. If you are on Wi-Fi, it'll have a Wi-Fi connection below that. How much time you have left on your laptop battery. Settings and then power on or off. And then, of course, your volume up or down. Battery level, volume, internet connection. And in the center, you've got date and time. If you click on that, you have your notification center right here. And then you have your calendar over here. And then if you do schedule events... On your calendar, it'll let you know what today's events will be. So we'll go ahead and close out of that. And then if you come over, you've got your activities. If you click on that, it brings up your dock to the left. And then if you want to see all applications, you click on that. Up here, you've got install. You've got rhythm box. You've got photos. You've got LibreOffice. Let's go ahead and check LibreOffice. Let's go to writer document. And I want to check which version we have. Let's go ahead and click help about LibreOffice. And it is version 7.0.4.2. It'll definitely be an older version because it is based on stable Debian. But you're not missing much. It is still a powerful desktop production suite. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Come back down over here. You've got your file manager. Let's go ahead and open up your file manager. And we'll move it over just a little bit. As you can see, this goes along with most GNOME desktops. And it is your files file manager. Over here, you've got your usual suspects. You've got your home folders over here. It's just a nice, lightweight file manager. lets you get things done and stays out of your way. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Back over to activities. Then you have your help. Now let's show applications. You've got advanced networking, archive manager, backups, GNOME boxes. Let's go ahead and open that up. GNOME boxes, I believe, is a very powerful tool. If you're used to using something like VirtualBox, GNOME boxes will make you feel right at home. Pretty much you just download the ISO of the operating system you want to take a look at. Go over to Create New. Now, when you open this up, it gives you several different options here. Unknown Media, because I'm in a virtual box. And then Download an OS. If you click on Download an OS, you can actually come over here and download something from Red Hat, Fedora, Ubuntu, OpenSUSE, Debian, 
or you can show more and it gives you Nix OS, Endless OS, you can pretty much come over here and find an operating system that you're wanting to take a look at, download the most recent ISO of it, and do everything right here in GNOME boxes. Or you can go back, if you've already got your ISO downloaded, you just come down here, click select a file, go to the location where you downloaded it, click on it, click open. Once you've selected it, it'll ask you how much memory you want to allot to it and how much disk space. You do that, click create, and it opens up in a virtual machine. So if you haven't used GNOME boxes, I highly suggest taking a look at it. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Back over to our applications. You've got calculator, calendar, disks, disk uses analyzer, document viewer, files we've already looked at, four in a row, Libre Calc, lights off, maps, rhythm box, power statistics, Polari, passwords, screenshot. Let's take a look at settings. Okay, settings has popped up. You've got your network here. It shows that you're connected on Ethernet because I'm in a virtual machine. You've got Bluetooth. You've got backgrounds. You can change that. We've already looked at that. You've got notifications. Right here, you can pretty much pick any app. And if it's got notifications turned on, if you don't want it to notify you, you can turn it off. This is really just what you prefer as a user as opposed to keeping it just set up the way it is out of the box. I like to customize mine. There are specific applications I want to get notifications from, and then there are specific applications that are just annoying. This pretty much lets you set it up to how you want. Then you've got search applications, you've got privacy, online accounts. You can come over here and set up your online accounts for Google, Microsoft, Microsoft Exchange, NextCloud. Makes it easier to have these signed in right here. And then when you're interacting throughout the OS with different applications that have access to these, it just makes it a lot easier. Then you're sharing, sound, power, displays, mouse and touchpad, keyboard shortcuts, printers, removable media, color, you just have a lot of different settings over here to customize and set it up the exact way that you want it. And then if you come down to about, it lets you know that we're pure OS. We're on an AMD Ryzen 5. 64-bit OS GNOME version is 3.38.5. As you can tell, they're a little bit behind on GNOME. But because it is based on Debian, you're going to have older packages. But that brings stability. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Back over to activities down here. Then you've got your software center. Let's take a look at that. And once your software center populates up top, you'll have suggested. And then down here, you've got editor's picks, everything from events, text editor, builder, clocks to documents. And then down here, you have categories, everything from audio and video down to utilities. Then you can click on this and it'll show you what apps you already have installed. And then if there's apps here that you do not want, all you got to do is come over, click remove. It'll take them off your system. And then you have updates, OS updates, LibreOffice updates. You can do everything right here to keep your system up to date and download applications. You also have the ability that if you want, you could just do a search. Say you wanted to install something like OBS, just hit OBS and hit enter. And there's OBS Studio. You would just click on it and then click install. It would bring up a screen showing you what dependencies you're going to need. You prove that, and then it would download it, and you would have OBS on your system. So here's where you come to keep your system up to date, download applications, or remove applications that you don't want. So let's go ahead and close out of this. Back over to activities. Software and update. This right here is just where you're getting your repositories. If you click on it, it'll say Pure OS Software, officially supported, and then other software. And it shows you the repos that it'll be pulling the information from. And then updates, authentication, and then developer options. If you want to add a PPA or a repository, you would just come in here, add it from right here. And then if you want to remove one, you can also select one and remove it. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Then you have text editor, to do, videos. Then you have web and then utilities. You've got system monitor. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. System monitor shows you what's open at present. And then, of course, what resources you're using. We've got two CPUs issued to this machine. At present, we're using less than 5%. And I have 2.9 gigabytes of RAM issued to this machine. And at present, we're at rest using 1.4 gigabytes. Now, you have to take into account is because I am in a virtual machine. Some of the OS is running directly in your RAM. So once you install it on hardware, boot up, you're going to be using less resources because it's not going to be completely in RAM. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Back down to utilities. You've got character map, advanced networking, document viewer, disks, archive manager, screenshot, passwords, GNOME tweaks. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now with GNOME tweaks, this gives you a little bit of customization that doesn't come in your normal settings app. Right off the bat, you got general, 
You can turn animations on or off. You can suspend when the laptop lid is closed. And then on appearance, here are all the themes that are presently being used. You can change these however you want to. It lets you customize applications, cursors, icons, your shell, sound, lock screen. And then on extensions, you can add extensions over here. If you look up here up top in the bar, you could add an applications menu if you wanted to. So that way you didn't always have to go over here and click on that and go down here. You could just click on that. There's your applications. I kind of like that. I like keeping that in the flow. Auto move windows, horizontal workspaces, launch new instance. Just different ways over here that you can customize everything. Right now we're using a specific font and a size. Now if you want to make your fonts bigger, go in here and click on that and adjust your font size in here, you could. Let's bump that to 13 and hit select. And then everything changes and it becomes a little bigger. Makes it easier to see. If you're somebody like me that has to wear glasses, it comes in handy. Keyboard and mouse, startup applications, top bar. This gives you options that you can do over here with top bar. If you don't like the dock and you don't like having to hit the activities, you could always just shut the activities window off and then just use your application button if you would want to. Window title bars gives you options for what's listed on your title bar. Like right now, we have a minimize and maximize. If you didn't want those there, you could just shut them off. Then you could just use the double click to maximize, double click to minimize. Or if you want to keep them there, you can. If you want to move them, you can move them over to the left or you can move them to the right. Just gives you different options of things that you want to do. You can adjust there. Then you've got windows, attach mode all dialogs, edge tiling, center new windows, workspaces, just a lot of different ways to customize your system the way you want it. So that's pretty much a quick look at Pure OS. What do you think? Is it something you might download, throw in a USB, put in a virtual machine and take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we produce, you can support us by becoming a member right here on the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.